Hi, so this is a series all about the feet and being able to mobilize them. I've had really good success with people who have needed potential surgery for bunions and things like that and we worked through the feet before that had to happen so that once the operation does occur then the foot function is um, in a better position to heal. So um, for this series you don't need a cloth but if you want to get one I think it's really useful to actually feel what it is that we do which will come up later so go ahead and grab yourself that. But we are going to start sitting down and it's really important that you're comfortable where you sit. You could be on a chair, but you need to be able to reach towards your feet because this is what it is all about. So we're going to begin by having all five toes laying down onto the floor. Now the first exercise is to lift your big toe away from the ground. So you're going to bring it up as high as possible and then lowering it down. So if this is not very easy for you to do or you just don't feel you have the strength, you can see this lovely big tendon coming up as we raise the toe. What you can do is place hands onto the other four, thing, four toes and raise the, um, the toe up on your own so that you can give it the understanding of what needs to be done and then you can let go and you may notice it comes up a lot easier. When we raise the big toe, what you'll see is that the arch gets more developed. And that's really important because a lot of people have got flat feet and um, instead of wearing just a prop underneath, what you want to do is try and build that arch with the muscles themselves. Now we're going to change to the four toes. So the big toe is going to stay down and you're going to raise the other four toes up off of the floor. Again, if this is not something that you are um, doing regularly, you might notice that this is a bit challenging. So as we did with the, the big toe, what you can place your hand over the toe and get the four toes up, or of course, help to lift them up. Now on some feet, they don't always look the same. They don't always behave the same. So just do what you can. It's about like really exploring what is available. You may feel sensations coming up your leg, which is partly where the muscles are located. So now we're going to have a little bit of alternating big toe and four toes and big toe and four toes. And the other thing that may happen is your fingers might start to do what your toes are meant to be doing. And that's okay because they're neurolo neurologically connected. But at the same time, we want to make sure that we're not doing it from our fingers, but that we are doing it from our toes. All right. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to then, um, take a hold of our foot and lace our fingers through our toes. So just having a good old squeeze now of our um, lacing. So once it's in, again, not so easy to get it in, but you're going to squeeze all the toes together and then release that hold. And again, squeeze and release. Now, if you're not used to putting things in between your toes, this might feel tender. So always we come with the preface that you need to work at a level that suits you. Everything we do is beneficial, but you also have your own tolerances that you need to work through. Release that. And now we take it into the splits. So we're going to pull your big toe and second toe apart. So we're doing lengthways splits. And then you take the second and the third toe and we pull them apart. And you're just walking yourself down your toes until you get to no more that you can do the splits with. And then you come back to the start and we take your toe and we do a rotation. So the rotation one way and the rotation the other way. So the joint is down here where the knuckle is. So that's kind of where we want to feel the twisting is happening. I don't want to twist up here at my nail bed. I really want to feel like I'm rotating down from the joint itself and all the way through each of the toes until we are finished. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stand up and we're going to notice our two feet. So how do they look? Some common things that you'll notice is color change because we've worked with one foot so that color is more present. You may notice that your balance on that foot that you've worked on is a little bit easier. By balance, I mean you could take your foot away from the ground and notice how much shift is at the ankle, or you may notice that you're more widely spread. So now what we're going to do is move onto the edge of your foot. So weight bearing onto that side area. 
So as we move on to there, you're going to create a little bit more stability coming up the side of the leg. Your knee would straighten as we do that. Um, and again, this is really important for those flat arches that some people um, have to get you into a little bit more of a contraction through the lower foot. So from here, we're going to go down again now that we've noticed some change on the side and we're going to repeat on the other side. So foot is flat, starting with the big toe lifting and lowering. So we'll just do, I don't know how many we did on the other side, a few. But as we're lifting up again, any of the strategies that you need to use, which means do you need to place your fingers down to do that? Or another nice one to go is have your finger underneath, pull your toe to you and slap it down. So you release it and down. So sometimes getting the joint moving in the opposite way with some force actually helps to lift the toe up closer toward you again. And you should, as I said, notice this big tendon that comes up to lift the big toe. We'll switch to the four toes now. So keeping the big toe down and lifting the four toes. So when I mentioned we lift the big toe, there's an arch coming into the foot that's quite natural. When we lift the four toes, you'll feel a flattening of the arch. And that's natural because our foot has got to do the two movements in order for us to walk. The foot is an incredible design and it's very malleable and we call it like a chameleon that can do so many different things. Let's alternate big toe to four toes, big toe to four toes. And um, I notice on my leg that this, this foot here, I can separate my baby toe from my fourth toe. Can't do that so easy on the other side. And that's all because of practice. All right, so we've done all of them. So now let's just combine the two feet together. We do have our other stretches to do, but what we're gonna play is the piano. So we're gonna raise <clears throat> all 10 toes up and we're gonna go from baby toe down to big toe. And again, lifting all the toes and rolling them through from the baby all the way to the big. So outside to the inside. And this is like a little caterpillar moving sideways. Great. All right, let's take a hold of the toes again and do our splits. So we move one way and the other and just walking down the toe line. Be careful of splitting your toes in half, like you don't want to split the skin, but you do want to get them in this mobile movement and then taking a hold and doing your circles in each direction. So toes and fingers are very similar as I've mentioned. So there are certain things that we can do with our toes and actions we can create and then ranges of movement like the circle is available to us but we can't do it on our own. It's not like I could suddenly say, okay, twist my toe. That's not a possibility. And I couldn't split my toes without my help. But what I can do is widen my toes and then narrow my toes. So widen toes fingers and pull them together. So that's an opportunity to also create a little bit of muscle, um, muscle movement for you. All right, so from here, we've got to go squeezing into our lacing. So threading the fingers through, and then we're gonna go into a little squeeze and release. Now, if you're into anything like reflexology, you would know there are a lot of points down here on the feet that relate to the head and the sinuses. And sometimes, um, you know, working through this helps to clear your head and do some wonderful things. And then releasing out of that. So we're going to come back up into a standing position to finish off with the, um, the outside foot weight bearing side. So we're going to go into standing on the edge of the foot and then relaxing. So you could just roll onto the foot like I'm doing, or you could lift and roll, which is what we're going to be doing in a moment anyway. So just feeling that you've got the ability to take weight off and then put weight on, but not feel like all your weight is on that and become vulnerable. You're looking to strengthen the areas of your foot here in your ankle. So what we'll do now is go onto one edge and onto the other edge and then flatten and flatten and edge and edge and flatten and flatten. So like I said, this is gonna build tone in the under arches of your feet. It builds strength in the side of your legs and tones up through the ligaments. 
and then one more to each side. So here comes our cloth movement just for ease of reference. The action is like a little caterpillar again. We lay the cloth out and you're going to pull it toward you. So you see there's a scrunching up but then you're going to push it away from you. So this works on a tiled surface or a, a wooden surface. Don't try to do this on a carpet, it might not come as easily to you. So this is the feeling of what's happening. Now I don't really need to have that as a tool. I could just be doing the action here without it. But for the visual purpose, I hope you um, saw that and then the pushing away. So there's two actions. There's a pulling toward me. So you can see the splay of the toes and the crunch of the toes and then the crunch to the splay as you go in the opposite direction. All right, I think that's enough of that. So from here, we'll just flick that out of the way. For the next one, I really recommend that you're on a padded surface, a carpet or a mat or something, because it can be a little bit tough on the foot if you haven't done it before. So we'll start with your feet onto a level place and you're going to take one foot back behind you. You're gonna get a stretch coming down through the front of the ankle. Now going behind is a little bit easier for some people because it's not as intense but if you feel you could go a little bit deeper then I'd love for you to start from here and to roll over the big toe toward the front and down. So we'll be keeping on that same leg as we just go into the action of rolling the foot and placing the heel. So while we do this there's this exposing of your front bone, your talus and getting a good stretch of the fascia that's really well bound over the front of the ankle. Now we're going to take that to the baby toe side. So as I mentioned we've got this major adaptability into our foot so you want to feel like these structures are mobile for you and uh, they have to support a lot of weight. Think of everything coming down from your upper body. We're changing feet going forward and backward. Um, they support your upper body but also gravitational forces coming down so it's not just the weight of your body they're supporting they're dealing also with gravitational forces or ground forces coming up and just noticing your two sides how they are feeling compared to each other some people have one foot that's a little worse than the other and we're out onto the edge of your toes and lots and lots of nerves run through the body, right? And especially into the feet. All right, so from here, I think that's about all that we're going to do with our feet today. I hope it serves you well. Feel free to drop a comment below and tell me if it's made a difference and um, look forward to seeing you soon in another video.